We lost calm with the spacecraft. If the spacecraft wasn't back up and running by the time we flew past Pluto, our nine-year wait would have been for nothing. There's a little bit of drama because this is true exploration. New Horizons is flying into the unknown. When we got there, we saw something that absolutely blew our minds. It was incredible. When we saw these photographs of what it actually looked like, really a world in its own right, it was mind-blowing. There was active geology on Pluto right now. Something so far from the sun should just be a cold, dead world, but it's not. They had this living, breathing heart. Three, two, one. We have ignition and liftoff of NASA's New Horizons spacecraft. We've been using the best telescopes that we had available to us to observe it for years, uh, most notably the Hubble Space Telescope. And through a lot of observations, uh, a, a map was made of, of Pluto's brightness, but it was very fuzzy. You have some light periods, some dark bits, but that's all we had. The Voyager spacecrafts that explored the rest of the solar system didn't go past Pluto. We had to send a dedicated spacecraft to go and have a look at Pluto because we'd never seen it before. I mean, lots of people move their personal life around their work and, and mine's no different, but it's, it is different in the sense that, you know, the spacecraft goes past Pluto once in your lifetime. And so uh, we arranged our wedding ahead of that and then we actually decided to wait to have children until after Pluto. When you have a mission like Pluto, you have times where you, you really are quite busy on the mission. You're taking new data. We flew past Jupiter, that gives you data. We're looking at the stars to make sure our instruments are still operating and they're healthy. But there are periods whereby, you know, the, the spacecraft is in hibernation, it's spinning, it's not taking data. If there's a problem, it knows how to call us. But other than that, it's, it's just marching forward towards Pluto. We lost calm with the spacecraft, totally silent. And so you can imagine when you're in any kind of critical situation, the worst thing is lack of any information. And that's essentially what we had. Pluto Ace, Mom on New Horizons, Pluto One. Could you advise why we are not locking up to telemetry? About the 4th of July, so American Independence Day in 2015, it goes into safe mode. It just stops doing anything except pointing back to the Earth and telling us there's a problem. Mom, Pluto Ace, stand by. I'll check with the station on the status of telemetry. So to put that into context, our encounter is 10 days at this point out, and it's a flyby. We're going to go past Pluto once. We're not going to slow down. We're not going to stop. We're not entering the system. We're flying by it. If the spacecraft wasn't back up and running by the time we flew past Pluto, our nine-year wait would have been for nothing. Station 43, Pluto Ace. Mom, on New Horizons, Pluto One, go ahead, Pluto Ace. We found the spacecraft. Um, it was responding to us. It was giving us information, but it was in a state that could not accomplish the encounter with Pluto. It takes nine hours to talk to the spacecraft at that point. And so we were doing the tests on the ground, making sure that the sequence that we're going to upload was working. It took us three days to do that. Around the clock, we um, slept in our offices. No one wanted to leave um, because we had waited all this time and there was no way that we were going to let this opportunity slip by. And it will transmit a message back to the Earth for about 20 minutes, in which we'll find out how it's doing. But there's a little bit of drama because this is true exploration. New Horizons is flying into the unknown. So before we entered the Pluto system, we downloaded the highest spatial resolution observations we've made to date. So there's only five of us in the whole world that had seen this image of Pluto. Oh, my hair looks better like that. This. And we're all just sitting there at that moment of like, oh, whoa. We've recorded data of the Pluto system, and we're outbound for Pluto. To see that was just incredible. It was a life-changing experience. Look what we accomplished. It's, it's truly amazing. Humankind can go out and explore these worlds. Um, and to see Pluto be revealed just before our eyes. 
So when you see an image of a new world, especially one as diverse as Pluto, there are so many things you can take home from it. And, and one of the first that jumped out of me is that heart-shaped region that's in the middle of the encounter hemisphere. And in particular, on, on the left-hand side of the heart, it's very smooth. And you don't get smooth regions in, on any worlds unless there's some form of active reprocessing. And so there was active geology on Pluto right now. Couldn't believe it. Still can't really. So why is it so geologically active? We still don't have all the answers. Does Pluto have a subsurface ocean? There was mountains with holes in, which points to the idea of a volcano. Maybe it's a cryovolcano, a vo volcano that erupts ice. Uh, and that would be better explained if there was enough heating to sort of maintain a, a liquid water ocean. Pluto's really cold, really, really, really cold, colder than you could possibly imagine cold. It's so cold that water there is sort of the bedrock. It's the ice is so hard it can form mountains, which is something that of course just couldn't occur on the Earth. And so on Pluto we see these, we see these big ice structures. So it all kind of implies that there's lots on Pluto that is quite fresh and new. And so whether you could have life that is in a sort of this, this contained place, subsurface, so dark, but with an, with an energy source, it, it, it's hard to imagine from what we know of life, it's not impossible, but it's gonna be a difficult thing to, to get to see because it's so far from the Earth, we don't want to do any harm. You certainly wouldn't want to send you know, a probe into this pristine world because you could kill everything that was in there just as you discover it. So it's definitely um, the thing of sci-fi and, and it's fun to think about, but it's going to be a really difficult thing to test. Anyone that's been working at home during this lockdown uh, will understand the frustration of limited broadband. And we have this on New Horizons because the spacecraft is so far from the Earth. Getting a signal back is so weak. It's meant that our six gigabytes of data that the spacecraft took during the encounter is still being downloaded. And you're really trying to make sure you have everything on the ground before it gets wiped from the spacecraft, before it's gone for, from humanity forever. You want to make sure you have everything. You know, true exploration isn't something that normal people get to do, right? I've got to explore worlds that have never been seen before. And, and I think once you've had that taste, it's just, you can't let it go. It's not quite adrenaline junky stuff, but you want to do it again. And so it would be, it would be absolutely incredible to do it twice in a lifetime. What a privilege. <laughs>